Welcome back to Daryl's Devotional with Woodruff's Family Wisdom slash PPP Time. Got here our producer, creator, Rose Woodruff. As we go into chapter 5 of Proverbs in the passing translation, we're going to break it down to its nitty gritty. First of all, avoid promiscuity. Listen to me, my son. For I know what I'm talking about. Listen carefully to my advice so that wisdom and discernment will enter your heart. And then the words you speak will express what you've learned. Remember this, the lips of his seductors seem sweet like honey. And her smooth words are like music in your ears. You want to stop there and, and, and talk about that? Well, we did kind of discuss before we uh, started the tape that uh, this proverb is talking about the seductive woman. However, this is the 21st century and we have seductive men as well. So, although it's going to be reading and saying the seductive woman, I think, uh, and it's a warning to the men, also women, this is a warning for you as well to watch out for the seductive man. I, I totally agree um, with Rose because really from my perspective, we always looked at it as men having game. You know what I mean? Because we suppo we supposed to be the one on the hunt. But the scriptures here is talking about that woman on the hunt. Right? That's out of order from the start, right? But I say he that findeth the wife findeth the good thing. So this woman is out of order already, right? Right. Anything else you want to add to that before we go on? Yeah. Verse 4. But I promise you this. In the end, all you'll be left with is a bitter conscience. For the sting of your sin will pierce your soul like a sword. That makes me think about the Bible said, He that's one with the heart, he that lay with the heart has become one with that heart. One is one spirit. So sometimes we got these soul ties due to mm -hmm. sex before marriage. That's a powerful thing in itself. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the soul ties mm -hmm. with everyone, you know, they say if you you slept with every person I've slept with, right? So if, if it's that powerful, why not wait until marriage if you possibly can? Right. Just imagine the bond that you and your husband are going to have of the tie of the two becoming one. That God intended. Right. In, in marriage, when you wait mm -hmm. for marriage, instead of uh, sleeping with so many people. And you might be thinking, what do I do with all these other folks, seeing that wasn't your case? You need to take all that to the cross. Right. right. Take it all to the cross. Because he promised to not only forgive our sins, but to cleanse us from all, from all unrighteous. that unrighteousness. Right. For the sting of your sin will pierce your soul like a sword. She will ruin your life. And he may ruin your life. <laughs> Drag you down to death and lead you straight to hell. Of course, he has the ability to do it as well. Right? Absolutely. And I know that's how a lot of women feel after so many of those relationships. Is that he took so much of her. Because women give so until it, they feel like he's dragged them down to hell, you know? So, I mean, you can move on. I don't know men that men feel that deeply, but that's I've, how women I've, feel. I've, I've seen some men highly depressed. Really? Over women? You, of, of, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. But it's probably it's more issue, women than men. It's an issue of the heart, right? Yes. The, the spirit of man. I mean, we look at it male, female, but in the spirit, as a heart is a heart, right? Whether, well, no matter who break it, or has been messed with. But I think the problem is women um, heart hurts more because from a child you're always looking for that marital relationship. That's your dream, your goal to get married, you know, to live happily ever after. You've been watching Snow White and, and uh, all these fairy tales for so long. You know, the prince coming to get you. And uh, for men, it's like from my opinion, 
It's like they don't want their heart to get out there. Once they feel their heart is getting involved in a relationship, they're ready to move on because they're not ready to commit. You, you, you got a good point there. And I, one of the things that I was thinking about as you were speaking was uh, from a, you know, not dealing with just the issues of the heart or our spirit, but hormones, right? And the way mm -hmm. we're built. You know, a lot of times I, I, I found as you get older, you become more emotional as a man. Mm -hmm. And so now any decision that you make, it's, it's really a matter of the heart. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of no lust. As when we're younger, I mean, we, we, we driven by that testosterone, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 to, and so we reaching out to young men on this broadcast uh, to say the benefit of using that energy toward the relationship and toward that, that wife of your youth that God give you versus squandering it in the street, mm -hmm. you know. But again, it's an issue more of a heart with the, with the right. man when he's older. Right. Not to mention the generational curse from how African-American men were taught to perform when they first came here. They were taught to love Produce. them and leave them. Love them and leave them. Right. They were all about producing uh, children. They wasn't a, it wasn't about really staying with that wife and uh, creating a family environment. You know, because that's how it was, you know, back in slavery time. So I'm pretty sure that's a generation of curse in there somewhere as well that probably has to be broken. So we probably can agree that we can remember when we used to love them and Man, leave, leave them. them. Oh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> she would ruin your life, drag you, or he would ruin your life, drag you down to the death, and lead you straight to hell. She or he. Has prevented many from considering the paths of life. Just hindered it. Yes, he or she will take you with her or him where you don't want to go. Where you don't want to go. Sliding down a slippery slope or slippery road and not even realizing where the two of you will end up. And you know what? One of the uh, things that we wanted to capture. And I was sitting together and reaching out to uh, young people and older life. It seemed like when it comes to the subject of failures, when it comes to relationships and things like this, uh, it's not, we don't like to publicize. We don't want to put our dirty laundry out there, mm -hmm. so to speak, and which is going to help the next man or the next woman right. or our children not fall yeah. to that. So to avoid you, those traps. To avoid those traps. And so part of uh setting the next generation up for success is we got to get that information out there right you know uh, and you really have to set your prerequisites this is one thing i always taught my girls and i don't think i did a good job of teaching my son but i always said you need to set your confession or your goal towards what type of husband you want mm -hmm. so therefore when they don't meet those standards when that person comes if they don't meet that standard, that standard, you can automatically just move on. You don't have to wait and get a soul tie mm -hmm. or get your heart broken because he wasn't the person you were looking for anyway. Mm -hmm. So you should know, A, if you want a Christian guy, or B, if you want someone that uh, that likes to hang out or you don't want someone who really don't want to be under your arm all the time or, if you, you know, if you want them educated or no. You know, some people say, what... Um, that one song is that uh, bad, good guys are no fun. What it, how it goes? <laughs> good boys are no fun. Some bad boys. Bad are, boys are no good. No good. Good, good boys, boys are, are no, no fun. fun. Yeah. So you know you know what type of guy you want, or you want a little bit of both. You know, I got uh, a Chicago thug here that turned Christian. He so he got a little gangster and, a, and he's morally sound as well. So he got a little bit of both worlds. So you know you kind of creating what you want your husband to be like. So if that's not it, don't start dating or start spending time when that's not the person you want. That's correct. Set your standard. Yeah. Know what you want before you start dating. Know what you want before you start dating. And as we get into this chapter five, it would help you if you have young men in your life, or older men, that's uh, starting over or whatever, to get this kind of information into them as far as a vision, for a relationship, for, a relationship. for what, what he wants on that end. So I, uh, this would have been really great for me to leverage uh, in talks with my son. Now I got to go back and capture, you know, and, and try to uh, make this investment in him. But as we, as we go on, we'll try to look, we'll look into those things. Don't even go near the door of her house unless you want to fall into her seduction or his seduction. 
or his house, right? Mm -hmm. In disgrace, you will relinquish your honor to another and all your remaining years will be squandered, given over to the cruel one. Now, what i like to bring out on this is, when it's talking about giving all your honor to another and squandering your years, it's really uh, messed up when you have a child to come out of that. Right. You know, because now you're giving not only your, your years, but your, your finances split between two households, you know, to supply the needs of that, of that baby. And not only that, women love so hard that it's hard to move on to another relationship. You know, you started this relationship when you were 18 or 19 years old. Now you look up, you're 30, and you know this guy wasn't good for you back then, they're not good for you now, but I just don't want to start over. Mm -hmm. So now you didn't gave all these years to a relationship that you knew from day one that probably wasn't the right relationship, but we're still holding on to hopes that someday it will be. So, you know, you don't want to give all of your youth to the wrong person. You don't want to give all your youth to the wrong person. And if you are uh, in a relationship or in a marriage and um, you don't want to squander it by messing with a stranger outside of it, I believe a uh, and late last year, uh, probably when the pandemic started, when we started doing PPP time, we went over the seven R's mm -hmm. and we was talking about resisting. One of the R's is resisting everybody but your mate. Uh, it's significant because uh, you don't want to be sp splitting your household finances with the household of a stranger. In other words, it, it might have been a one time sleep or whatever that you've been seduced on one end or the other, but the repercussions of that got you splitting your finances mm -hmm. between two houses. Because a child was was born out of that one night of passion. Or because you mess around and, and got your nose wide open, there ain't no children even produced. But you're still trying to get our hair done over there. Well, well yeah, if you got a, somebody on the side. You got somebody on the side. You got a side now. chick or yeah, now you're trying to run can we say a, a side chick or a side chuck? A side, <laughs> side chick or side, a side chuck. chuck. Cause it's amazing how women today will support a man yeah, as we're well. just talking about that yeah. not to mention um uh, the new word for uh seductive women is probably cougars mm -hmm. you know they don't mind getting the young guy because they just won't you know that's why i wanted to make sure that this was brought both ways right. because today women are has uh, this is 21st century they have changed their morality as well they can be just like the guys in mentality I don't want to open up a box as to why, <laughs> you know, some of the things are falling off and going one way or the other. But we live in a society today where even if God made all the numbers correct and it's one man for each woman, mm -hmm. it ain't like that no more, right? Right. Because all what's going on in America, right. not just America, but in the world today, you know, it's, it's, it's something. So anyway, why would you let a stranger, let strangers take you away your strength while the labors of your house go to someone else? For when you grow old, you will groan in anguish and shame as sexually transmitted diseases consume your body. Now, one of the things me and Rose were talking about uh, earlier is like, that should be at the top of the list, right? Not, not the fact she got you for 18 years or he got you for 18 years, but you know, sexually transmitted diseases. We found out that that condom can't even block some of the stuff that's coming through there, right? Not to mention you had COVID on top of it. COVID. Yeah, I love got, it. now you're working with something else. Oh my goodness. So look at it. Yeah. And then finally, you'll admit that you were wrong and say, if only I had listened to wisdom's voice and not stubbornly demanded my own way because my heart hated to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. So, how many times, and I can remember really crying out to my daughters because and we were probably share our love story maybe in uh, this year how we met and uh, sometimes people just don't have patience to wait on God in relationships they want to help God out God don't have respect to a person he really don't if he did it for one he would do it for uh, someone it for else I think that's one general teaching a lot of things we talk about you may say well that's particular to this that and look God want to help you if he loosed the angels for Isaac mm -hmm. to get his wife he'll do it for you Right. Mm -hmm. It's just all about being patient. And it's all about really making that request known. A lot of people don't even make a request for their spouse. I can remember saying, Lord, I don't even want to get married right now. Mm -hmm. I just want to know who that is. 
or maybe even let's just be friends or let's spend time together and you know lo and behold we were just friends and we were spending time together mm -hmm. anyway i was just gonna say that. Let, me, let me put this in there <laughs> because i was thinking about people that might have you might have your uh your spouse <laughs> your predestined spouse may <laughs> be in the friend zone may be in the friend zone but the holy ghost <laughs> can break the yoke of the friend zone Take it to the end zone. And take you to the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the main thing is just being patient, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and wait on God in that area. Because mm -hmm. this is what it's saying is that with the enemy, everything that God has, the enemy he always, always have a perversion. perversion. Mm -hmm. So he always going to have a distraction. So anytime God try to give you his best, mm -hmm. the enemy is always going to bring a distraction mm -hmm. to throw you off. It's almost like a that TV show where you want curtain number one, number two, and number three. Mm -hmm. And he'll show you a little something shiny, you know, in front of curtain number one. And, you know, number number three could be the one. You know, you're not mm -hmm. you're not aware right. of who God has for you because you're looking at the outer appearance instead of asking God uh, from the heart and from the spirit who's your spouse. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the outer appearance. Right. I'm thinking about it in uh, Romans where it said, we don't hold this do-it-yourself world one red mm -hmm. cent. We can do it God's way. Who, who report you're going to believe? Are you going to re believe the report of the Lord and his way of doing things? Or are you going to be uh, locked into what the world is experiencing, operating in their self and their own strength and being a statistic? Mm -hmm. We don't have to do things or walk, walk as those statistics. We can walk in the kingdom of God and get your wife, right? your, your children, your spouse, you know, mm -hmm. everything you got going on. Why didn't I take seriously the warning of my, my wise counselors? Why was I so stupid to think that I could get away with it? Mm -hmm. Now I'm totally disgraced and my life is ruined. I'm paying the price for the people of the congregation are, are my are now my judges. Mm -hmm. You got anything you want to add to that? Yeah. I mean, your life is not ruined. It's not ruined. We're in New Testament now. Yeah. Jesus it's not, died. It may feel like it's ruined. Right. But you know, like I always tell the kids, you know, we they do when we do things that we shouldn't do, mm -hmm. I always tell them it always work out. Mm -hmm. But you just got to go through the workout. Right. You know, you might have to go through a little hurt, a little pain, uh, and, or something like that. But at the end of the day, it always works it's out. It's never too late to repent. It's right? never too late. That's awesome. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ is always. And I mean, it may be your a little life shame. can start today. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not ruined, but it, and th this part really is really touches me it says for the people of the congregation oh, no, are now no, no. my judges because I can remember you know I uh, had a child out of wedlock my, my first daughter mm -hmm. so you know you go into church <laughs> now you're pregnant you don't have a husband so yeah you're shame you feel like your life is ruined you feel like your life is over mm -hmm. but it's not God has a plan the original plan and the husband and the spouse that he had for you all along so now you may have to go through a little shame you may feel like it's ruined but guess what it always work out. I was praying. I was out. trying to come the whole time. <laughs> Just wait on me. <laughs> Next caption read: Sex reserved for marriage. And maybe this is one reason why sex is reserved for marriage. I think everybody look at all the other things, but mm -hmm. one reason why sex is reserved for marriage because all the hurt, and pain, and, and the seeds that come out of it that when that relationship don't work out, and I know there is divorce, but I do believe in the bottom of my heart that more people walk away from relationships when there is not a marriage certificate. I think it's easier to walk away. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to having to really go to the courts and uh, go through uh, a divorce, I think everybody said, let me, right. The more troublesome it is, mm -hmm. you get more incentive. It's commitment, that's what it's called. Right, <laughs> yeah, I think you do think about it a little harder may go to counseling let's give it another try but if you don't have a paper it's easy to say i'm back in the game i know it what <laughs> I'm, I'm back in the game i'm out <laughs> all right so no sex. legally binding nothing right? right sex reserved for marriage my son or my daughter share your love with your wife or your husband alone drink from her well of pleasure and from no other Why would you have sex with a stranger or with an, anyone other than her or him? And that's one of those R's, <laughs> sex and responsiveness. Right. Resist. Resist everyone except for your mate. Except for your mate. That's significant too. Not only not to 
that you should resist everybody outside of your mate, but your mate you should not resist. <laughs> huh? Let yeah. it go. Let it go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? Reserve this pleasure for you and her alone and not with another. Reserving it. Your sex life will be blessed as you take joy and pleasure in the wife or the husband of your youth. And guess that word is a promise. You have a promise Amen. that if you stay only to your spouse, your sex will be blessed. That's it will empowered. be empowered. <laughs> <laughs> That's supernatural. Don't miss out on your promise. <laughs> supernatural love making. Divine. Divine. Let her breast be your satisfaction. Let her embrace intoxicate you at all times. Be continually delighted and ravished with her love. Or his love. Or his love. Now to me that that reminds me of the scripture where God told us to love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, all our mind, all our soul, and all our strength. Here, he's saying being totally captivated. I look at it from the standpoint of loving Rose with all of my heart, my mind, my soul, my eyes, and everything. Right? right? It's like be captivated with her. I was telling her the other day, I was, I was just looking at her. I only have, I only have eyes, eyes for you. You know, I was looking at her and I was like, man, I, I, I'm still as intoxicated by her, looking at her, as day one. So, praise God. Be continually delighted and ravished with her love. Oh, but my point on all that is, if you give divided attention, mm -hmm. you, to, you know, somebody said, well, attention goes, energy flows. So all of a sudden now you're expanding your energy over here and over there and over there. It's taken away from the passion that you're supposed to have right here. See, a lot of people think they can maintain that passion here because they put their attention out there, next thing you know, your relationship is diminished. Mm -hmm. You know what my mom always said? Fire gone. What my mom say? God, if you, God bless you if you live right now. No. Like, if you live right, God bless you. tell David? Oh, keep your mind on one thing. <laughs> <laughs> keep your mind on one thing. She ain't gave me about two commandments. Now. <laughs> one thing. If you live right, God will bless you. Keep your mind, keep your mind on, on one thing. thing. Man, keep your mind on one thing. Mama okay. King. My son. Why would you be exhilarated by an adulteress? Or oh, my daughter, why would you be exhilarated by a player? <laughs> by embracing a woman who is not yours, or embracing a man who is not yours. What you know we always say? We don't hate the player. <laughs> we just hate the game. <laughs> <laughs> For God sees everything you do, and his eyes are wide open as he observes every single habit you have habits so now outside outside of doing things the right way the scripture kind of uh tells us that inadvertently that you're creating habits mm -hmm. and god see the habits you're creating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. be aware or beware that your sins don't overtake you and the scars of your own conscience become the ropes that tie you up wow because if you create those habits, do you know how uh, homeboy say, I'm a man, ain't I? Yeah. <laughs> you right. know, like, like he got to look mm -hmm. because he's a man. Right. So now you're creating habits of watching. Mm -hmm. Now you, Then you're creating habits of saying little things. Next thing you know, you're in a relationship. You're, you're in a relationship. <laughs> but okay. I'm, I'm going to go a little bit deep in the sense that, all right, he said, beware that your sins don't overtake you or these habits that you do. But say for instance, the eye gates and imagination. If you if you take the imagination over to other things that you can use your imagination on besides the, the woman in person, but the women on the film, the women in pornography, in the books, or wherever, which way you get it, you're still creating a habit on that end. But well, it still comes with What did the Bible say start. about that? Right. What did it say? You that already you, commit adultery with heart, her already in, in your, your heart. heart. Mm -hmm. So God is looking at, the reason being is because the Bible said a good man after good treasure of his heart bring forth good things. And when that heart and that imagination has been tampered with, it stops the flow of the blessings of God into the earth. When 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 God was building, when they was building that tower of Babylon, mm -hmm. 
nothing that they imagined could be withheld from them. That's why God had to break that up. But so it is today. The devil try to break up our consistency with our imagination and everything to try to stop the productivity of good mm -hmm. things coming into our life right. from our heart. But the Bible also said, evil man not the evil treasures of his heart. Bring forth evil things. If you hadn't contemplated some of those things, you wouldn't be acting on it. Right. 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 So here we go. And not to mention the fact that you, you can hang yourself with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you can hang yourself with that, right? Mm -hmm. Those who choose wickedness die for lack of self-control. For their foolish ways lead them astray. It's just self-control, right? Mm -hmm. But And those ways right. can lead you astray. They can sever the relationships. But you know what God has given us? For a lack of self-control when operating in... Uh, and sex before marriage. You know what he told us to do? Get your own verse. Right? He told you go get you a woman. Because he said it's better to marry than it's to be burn. It's better to marry than to, to burn, burn with, with that passion. You don't want to have control of the passion. You want that passion to be released in the proper in the proper environment. Get your wife. That wife should be a wife of your youth. Right? I think they speak volumes. You know, so I'm not saying that it's the that you should get married young. I'm just saying that if you don't have the discipline, mm -hmm. that's the answer. And it's good that they, okay, if you're 40 or ish or more, you may understand wife of your youth. Because you really do burn with passion once um, you get about 13 or 14 years old, you start looking into that part of your life. And it's all you think about. I know God, guys most of the time, you know, once they hit puberty, that's all they think about until it, you know, mm -hmm. is women, right? So you're burning with that passion. That's why they talk about the wife of you. Get you a wife because you're young at that young age. Because when you start getting to 40 and stuff like that, your goals and, you know, retirement and, and uh, building empires and more things, are, things are, that are on your mind, you don't just... We start gazed about a woman. You've been like I've been there, done that. You know, I didn't did that for the last twenty years. Well, I so, must say that. <laughs> so that's why they say youth, a wife of at your youth. Yeah, but that, but having that image of having the wife at your youth, and having that powerful uh, time in your life, when you go to tap into that Abraham anointing mm -hmm. and that Abraham blessing, Abraham and Sarah blessing, on the backside, you got a vision now. You know, I was just thinking about this. You know, it's just a contemplation of how exciting that is. You know what I'm saying? You got that built in, you know, to believe right. God to take you back, you know, to maintain that. Because he said your youth to be renewed. Like the like eagles. The eagles. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? Well, I think you can, make, you can make a demand on that. You can make a demand. Because what's really great is that for us anyway, it, during our youth, our 20s and our 30s, we were raising children. So you were always so busy. You are always trying to steal time. Uh, to be with each other, but now at our age of empty nesters, empty nesters, you know, now if you had that same <laughs> burning with that same passion, now you got plenty of time to be together, exactly. especially during the pandemic. Right. <laughs> okay, because you can't. You, you always said you can't come over. Mm -hmm. You know, Graham Grams and Pop Pops is closed. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we're not inviting anyone to the house. So it's a great demand to make on your body, and and a great request to make from the Lord. Ultimate health, right? Yeah. Ultimate health. Oh, we're about to end here. Mm -hmm. Let me read here. Those who choose wickedness die for lack of self-control, for their foolish ways lead them astray, carrying them away as hostages, kidnapped, captives, robbed of destiny. Wow. That's something. You got to stop this thing in its tracks for you be robbed of your potential and your destiny. Mm-hmm. That's something. When Getting you think about out. that, wow. oh man, it affects your money, the lot, the beautiful love life that you. I mean, me and Rose about to celebrate 36 years of marriage, and it was a time when when uh, when my dad passed, they had been married 36 years, and I was thinking then, my Lord, that's woo, that's awesome, dude. 36 mm -hmm. years of marriage, you know. But this year I turned a year older than my dad, you know, and we celebrated 36 years of marriage, but we, I hadn't. Uh, Added up what 120 years look like as far as marriage is concerned, but we finna do 120 years. Anything less than 100 gonna seem like a cheat, right? Mm -hmm. So we thank God for, for for this word that you received. Again, we don't know 
with that title you're putting on there. Yeah. Uh, but the main thing, I just wanted to uh, repeat the last <laughs> sentence mm -hmm. again. It says, kidnapped. Kidnapped. Captive. Captives. Robbed of robbed destiny. Of destiny. And that what happens when you start relationships that are not, most of the time, that are not predestined and that you know that are not right for you. Mm -hmm. It's all that passion of that love uh, that you've given that person mm -hmm. that you can't seem to break. It's mm -hmm. really a soul tie a lot of times. It's mm -hmm. just a soul tie that you just cannot break. And it does rob you of your destiny because, you know, you could be going on doing other things. And how many women decide, you know, guess what? I'm just going to do whatever he does. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not gonna live my destiny or my dream. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna live his destiny or let him uh, do what he wants to do. So now you're losing out yourself. Mm -hmm. So you really, so get having a relationship and having who God has for you is so important. Now, that's so powerful. And it brought back to my remembrance, John four and four as we close. God's showing you how much he's concerned about the relationship because he caught this woman mm -hmm. at, the, at Jacob's well when he was coming through Samaria and when he got through ministering to her or when he was in the midst of ministering to her a word of knowledge kicked in and he told her to go get her husband and she said I don't have a husband he said you're right you said well you don't have a husband and the one that you with now he's not none of yours but you done had five in other words I done seen you go over and over again making these bad mistakes in relationships but I'm so concerned that you're going to have to go about this a different way you can't go down here to the club right to get the to get the husband or to these gathering places it's not about where you gather or the app that you use right right and that was the situation with her back then it was jacob's well the well was where men came to water their camels and everything else you knew the men was going to be there and they could pick up a woman on the side they pick up a woman <laughs> on the side now she was successful at picking them up right she just ain't getting the right one right, right? and that's what's going on with all these apps mm -hmm. you swiping left and you swiping right you swiping <laughs> left and you swiping right but really what it reminds me of a lot of the relationships uh premarital counseling that we did mm -hmm. we we saw how women would pick up men in the club right mm -hmm. and now she's trying to clean him up yeah and get make a church man out of him yeah i don't know i don't think i've seen one of them work right but we did <laughs> go ahead and do uh premarital counseling with them and i think some of them probably went ahead and got married bless their heart but anyway what I don't fellowship know, has light with what light than darkness you know and, I'm, and i can guarantee you that when she made out that list for that man i bet she didn't say i'm going to the club to get one i bet she was looking for a godly man but she just didn't have the patience i didn't know how to pull him off the paper but god is concerned right yes he now, is. understand when we read out the book of proverbs this was pre-jesus coming on the mm -hmm. scene shedding his blood on calvary and giving us the victory but faith in Jesus Christ give us the victory and give us access to the same covenant that Abraham Isaac and Jacob walked in and we saw that covenant work in getting Isaac a wife right. and it worked in getting me one too yes and honey I'm gonna ask you to pray before we um, close today and I really want you to pray for um, relationships maybe uh, pray for husbands and wives who married and maybe for some reason things have changed say you know how sometimes people get married and one gets saved and the other one don't so now the house is kind of almost divided because you know they're going two different directions and uh also you know for those relationships the people looking for a spouse for uh someone who got half of them exactly well father in the name of jesus we pray for those that have not uh, obtained their spouse yet we know that your covenant covers that yes it's uh, been exemplified uh, in the book of Genesis where angels were sent ahead of time ahead of Abraham's servant to go get Isaac a wife set that whole scenario up in order for that to happen and transpire so in the New Testament we see Jesus at the well ministering to that woman and wanting to straighten her life out where men was concerned and he said this thing would be in her springing up into everlasting life it was going to give her the everlasting life that she's supposed to have guess what it improved it in also included the husband that she's supposed right. to have paul even ministered on it and said a husband versus her husband and a wife versus his wife you are concerned and god we pray for those that are married that maybe one was not saved and the other one was and or maybe one has fell off and the other one's still in there anywhere it goes 
God, we know that the unbelieving husband or the unbelieving wife is sanctified by that believing wife or believing husband. So in the name of Jesus, because of your covenant being that strong, we decree that those marriages be whole and entire and lacking nothing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you, baby. Thanks for tuning in to Woodrow Family Wisdom at pppptime.com. And always remember that you are happy, happy healthy, healthy, wealthy, fit, and, and forgiven. forgiven.